On March 29, 2022, China put into service a new rocket called the Long March 6A. Launched from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in the province of Shanxi, it put two satellites into sun-synchronous orbit, the Pujang-2 and the Tianquan-2. The Long March 6A is actually the second new Chinese rocket of 2022, after the inaugural launch of the Long March 8 earlier in February, and it's also the first time that the Chinese have combined solid and liquid-fueled propulsion technologies in a single rocket. I'm Jean Deville, welcome to the Dongfang Hour, a channel where we talk about Chinese space. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dongfang Hour. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Over the past 10 years, China has inaugurated a new generation of Long March rockets, the Long March 5, 6, 7, and 8. These new members of the Long March family have the ambition of progressively replacing the older generation Long March 2, 3, and 4, which are still very much in service, but use a less efficient and more toxic hypergolic fuels technology. The new generation rockets were all inaugurated between 2015 and 2020. It all started with the smallest rocket, the Long March 6, launched for the first time in 2015, and this was followed by the medium lift rockets, the Long March 7, 7A, 8, and 8A, which performed their maiden launches between 2016 and 2021. And finally, there was the heavy lift Long March 5 and 5B, capable of handling the heavier payloads of China's space program. Now let's focus more specifically on the Long March 6, the light lift member, which will be, as we will see, derived into the Long March 6A. The Long March 6 has now been in service for almost seven years, since 2015, and it's recognizable by its small size. It's barely 29 meters tall, and this is barely the height of a strap-on booster of a Long March 5 or a Long March 7. This rocket is composed of three stages. You have the first stage, which has a diameter of 3.35 meters and consists of a single YF-100 engine, burning liquid oxygen and kerosene, a mix often known as Kerolox. These are the same engines that are also used on the Long March 5, 7, and 8, which highlights the modular approach taken by the Chinese for the development of their new generation Long March family. The second stage has a diameter of 2.25 meters and uses a single YF-115, which is basically a vacuum-optimized version of the YF-100 Kerlox fueled engine mentioned previously. And finally, the upper stage uses the YF-50E engine, burning unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, a fairly classic hypergolic mix for this kind of upper stage engine. The rocket was developed by the Shanghai Academy of Space Technology, also known as SAS or the 8th Academy. And this is one of the two main state-owned rocket manufacturers in China, the other one being CALT, also known as the 1st Academy. Now with that out of the way, let's look at the newer Long March 6A that flew a couple of weeks back and focus on why this is a significant shift for China. The Long March 6A looks almost completely different from the Long March 6. The first stage was significantly elongated using two YF-100 engines instead of a single one. The second stage is also a bit chunkier with an increased diameter of 3.35 meters instead of 2.25. And perhaps even more significantly, four solid fueled strap-on boosters were added, dramatically increasing the rocket's thrust. You see, each individual booster is a two-segment solid fueled engine, providing 120 tons of thrust, so that's 480 tons in total, on top of the 240 that you have already and that are provided by the core stage. That's a massive 720 tons of thrust at liftoff, and just to give you an idea, that's about six times the thrust of the original Long March 6. The Long March 6A has a total height of 50 meters and puts about four tons into sun synchronous orbit, as opposed to one ton for the original Long March 6. On paper, it looks like the Long March 6A will oddly be in competition with another rocket, the Long March 8A, which also puts roughly four tons into sun synchronous orbit. In practice, they are more complementary than anything, and I say this because apart from the Long March 6 series, all new generation rockets are necessarily launched from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center in the southern province of Hainan, and this launch site alone cannot accommodate the current cadence of Chinese launches. So having new generation rockets like the Long March 6 and 6A launch from separate launch sites like the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in Shanxi, this is basically an important step to reduce the current bottleneck in terms of launch pads for new generation launch vehicles. 
What's perhaps most interesting about the Long March 6A is that this is the first time in the country that solid and liquid-filled propulsion are combined in a single rocket. Traditionally, China either has purely liquid-filled launch vehicles, and we're talking about literally all of Chinese rockets over the past 50 years, or in other more specific cases, they also have purely solid-filled rockets, like the Long March 11, or some of the rockets that are currently being developed by the Chinese commercial launch companies. It's also worth noting that combining solid and liquid-filled propulsion is in no case the world first. This is something that you can already see on an Ariane 5 or on the future Ariane 6. One important thing with this kind of hybrid architecture is that liquid-filled rocket engines are always ignited first before the solid-filled counterparts. And this is because once solid-filled engines are ignited, you cannot shut them off. On the other hand, for the liquid-filled engines, you can simply just interrupt the turbo pumps, which in turn stops the arrival of propellant in the combustion chamber, which in turn naturally switches off the engine. In case of the Long March 6A, the ignition process for the two liquid-fueled YF-100 engines start at T equals 0 seconds, all the way to T equals 2.5 seconds. The rocket then has 0.3 seconds to assess if the liquid-fueled engines have started up correctly, using three sets of sensors for redundancy. If two sets or more indicate that conditions are nominal, then the solid rocket boosters are ignited at T equals 2.8 seconds, and otherwise, if it's not the case, the liquid-filled Carolox engines are switched off. Now, moving more into the realm of visual facts, the Long March 6A was launched from a brand new launch pad constructed at the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center, and it reportedly included a lot of automation and smart features, which enabled the launch site personnel to withdraw from the pad four hours before the launch instead of 30 minutes with a more traditional launch pad. And this is due to a lot of the fueling and launch preparation operations now being done robotically rather than manually. Another interesting point about this launch pad is that it was fitted with a water deluge system. Deluge systems are designed to pour an insane amount of water shortly before engine ignition to enable the strong acoustic waves generated by the engine to dissipate rather than get reflected back and potentially damage the rocket. This is why you can see massive clouds of water vapor forming during the launch of the Long March 6A, something that you don't generally see with the other landlocked launch sites of China. And final point to wrap up this episode, it seems that China will possibly derive the Long March 6A into other versions. Hong Gong, the chief commander of the Long March 6A, mentioned that the Shanghai Academy of Space Technology was exploring reducing the number of boosters from 4 to 0 or 2 for lighter versions, or on the contrary, using the core stage as potential strap-on boosters for an even more massive version. Interestingly, at the end of a CGI animation provided by the company of the Long March 6A, one of the final scenes hint at these three other versions. And that's it for this episode. As always, a special thanks to our most recent patrons, Juk Lung, Vilik Vane, Spef Huatua, Teparanga Himaraya, and friends of NASA, who went to buymeacoffee.com slash hour to support the channel. I'm also finally going to open a Patreon page for regular patrons with some exclusive perks going on there, so do stay tuned for that. Again, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting the channel, and I will see you in the next episode.